actually, a, what is the relationship then between Allah and Jibreel alayhi salam? Number one, he is Kalimullah min al malaika He is the one that Allah speaks to from the angels. Now you might be thinking to yourself, doesn't Allah speak to all of the angels? No. Just as there are particular human beings that Allah speaks to directly, there are particular angels that Allah speaks to directly. So he speaks to Al-Muqassimati Amra, all four of the angels we mentioned that apportion the command of Allah. There are narrations of direct communication between Allah and them. But Allah always speaks directly to Jibreel. So for the other angels, Allah might send Jibreel to them. right? Even the others of Al-Muqassimati Amra, those that apportion the command of Allah. Allah never sends another angel to talk to Jibreel. Allah speaks to Jibreel directly, then Jibreel goes out and delivers the message to the rest of the angels. So he is Kalimullah from the angels. With the prophets, and we see that frequently, and many ahadith will cover it, Nada Jibreel, Allah calls Jibreel, right? Whereas never the opposite where someone else was sent to Jibreel. With the other prophets of Allah, there's not a single prophet of Allah that you study, except that there's a mention of Jibreel. Seriously, just go through Qasas al-Anbiya, the stories of the prophets, you'll find a mention of Jibreel alayhi salam in some way, shape or form. He's got to be there because he has been sent to 124,000 prophets. In the hadith of in Muslim Imam Ahmad, there were 124,000 anbiya. Amongst them, 315 were messengers, were rusul. He has been sent to each and every single one of them to teach them, to raise them, to support them, to protect them. He was there. He's, he's got a first-hand account. What is another title that he has with them? He is Nasir al-Anbiya. He's the one who supports the Prophets. He aids the Prophets. He doesn't just aid them by bringing them revelation. He plays a multitude of roles in all of their lives. In fact, if you go through them quickly, like where are the narrations that mention Jibreel Islam? I'm not going to go into detail with any particular Prophet story, but just some highlights to get an idea, and then we'll move on to the Prophet wasallam. With Adam wasallam. there are narrations that mention Jibreel was the angel that Allah sent to gather the dirt that would be used to create Adam alayhi salam. Are any of them sahih in and of themselves? No, but that shows you where the mentions of Jibreel come. That early on in the very creation of Adam alayhi salam. When Adam alayhi salam was expelled from paradise, did Allah communicate directly with Adam anymore? Did he? No. Now Jibreel becomes the, 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 the uh, intermediary between Allah and Adam alayhi salam. In Jannah, Adam alayhi salam was spoken to directly. And Imam al-Zarqashi rahimahullah says that actually is probably a greater blessing that was taken away from him than Jannah. That Adam used to be spoken to directly from Allah. When he left paradise, Allah started to send Jibreel to him only. Jibreel became the means of communication to Adam alayhi salam. When Adam passes away, they didn't know what to do with his body obviously because human beings had never experienced death before. Allah sent Jibreel alayhi salam and a group of angels they washed the body of Adam alayhi salam. They shrouded Adam alayhi salam. They buried Adam alayhi salam. So he's there from the very start, even with Adam alayhi salam. You also find the narrations, obviously, that mention him with Idris alayhi salam. Idris, who is Enoch, the son of Sheath, the grandson of Adam alayhi salam. And Idris, what you can take from the narrations about him is that he's a man with ulu al himma. He's a man with high ambitions that. You know, is very prone to calling people to good and forbidding evil. The first one to write with a pen and so on and so forth. A person who loves da'wah. There's a very famous narration about Idris alayhi salam that Idris wanted to know how much time he has left. Why did he want to know how much time he has left? Because, you know, you know, for people, for most people, it's that, you know, you want to party it up until the last day. Like if you know the date of your death, well, okay, you know, I'm going to party it up. And then on that day, tawbah. Right, just have it on your calendar, repent, then die. Right, it doesn't work that way, right? Is that why Idris wanted to know the date of his death? No. Idris Islam wanted to know the date of his death or he wanted to know how much time he had left because of his aspirations of da'wah. Because of his, he wanted to know how to adjust his goals accordingly. So he tells Jibreel alayhi salam to find out for him. And the reason why I mention this narration right now is because one thing to note about Jibreel as well, he is the only one that can take a prophet through the heavens and bring him down. He's the only one that can ascend or descend with any of the prophets of Allah through the heavens. He takes Idris alayhi salam and he ascends with him. And in, this, you know, in, in these athar, which are primarily from the people of the book, he meets the angel of death in the fourth heaven. And in the fourth heaven, Jibreel alayhi salam asks the angel of death that this is the servant of Allah Idris and he wants to know how much time he has left. And the angel of death says, you know, I was amazed when Allah told me to take this man's soul in the fourth heaven. 
So he dies in the fourth heaven. Ibn Hajar, rahimahullah, who obviously is the most strict of hadith, he says that these narrations are strengthened and corroborated by the evidence from the Prophet ﷺ that when the Prophet ﷺ went on the night of al Isra' al-Mi'raj, where did he meet Idris? In the fourth heaven. So Idris is the only man that ever died in the heavens. Right? And, Allah, and that's one of the interpretations of وَرَفَعْنَاهُ مَكَانًا عَلِيَةً That we raised him to a high position. And biblically, Enoch dies in the fourth heaven. Okay, so it's corroborated by the evidence from the Messenger Wasallam as well. So you find that mention of Jibreel responding to the request of a prophet, taking him through the heavens to meet Allah or to meet the angel of death, uh, to help him, to answer his requests. The most, uh, the most mentions of Jibreel Wasallam with any previous prophet are with Ibrahim and his family. So Ibrahim, who is subhanAllah mentioned so highly by the Prophet Wasallam. This is, this is the mill of Ibrahim, this is the religion, the way of Ibrahim Wasallam. You find the mention of Jibreel alayhi salam with Ibrahim on numerous occasions. You find it from the moment that Ibrahim was thrown into that fire. Now, Ibn Abbas radiallahu anhu says, when Ibrahim was to be thrown into the fire, all of the angels wanted to help him. Mikael was waiting for a command from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to put the fire out. I mean, Allah could have easily just caused it to storm and the fire goes out. All of the angels are waiting and wondering why there's a delay in the command to do away with the fire or to protect Ibrahim salam. So Jibreel comes to Ibrahim salam, and he says, haja? Is there anything you want me to do for you? Ibrahim knows why Jibreel is asking that question. He says, Amma ilayk fala. He said, look, if it's from you, I don't want anything from you. He said, if it's from Allah, then okay. He recognizes that Jibreel was not given a command from Allah to put the fire out. So if it's from Allah, then I'll take it. If it's from you, Jibreel, look, Allah has a plan, right? So Jibreel is telling Ibrahim, تسأله, Why don't you just ask him? Just ask Allah. It'll all be dealt with. Ibrahim السلام, says, Allah knows my situation. His knowledge of my situation makes it irrelevant for me to ask. Now that's not for us. That's for the prophets of Allah. Meaning Allah knows, God knows what's happening right now. So Abraham knows that, you know what? Allah is going to make a way out of this. All right? So Jibreel السلام, wants to help him and that's actually the origin of the words according to Abdullah bin Mas'ud and many of the companions of Hasbi Allah wa Ni'm al wakil That Ibrahim was the first one in that situation to say Allah is enough for me and he's the best of protectors and obviously the plan of God, the plan of Allah was what? That the fire wasn't going to burn Abraham. Kuni bardan wa salama, be cool and peaceful on Ibrahim salam. So we see it there, right? We see it from that moment in the fire. Ibrahim السلام, moves on, he goes to, you know, Hajar السلام, comes into the picture, Ismail is born السلام, then obviously Allah commands Ibrahim to leave them in the desert. Then comes the very long, one of the longest hadith actually in Sahih al-Bukhari is this hadith, where the Prophet السلام, mentions Hajar running from, you know, from, from Safa to Marwa, running around, carrying her baby Ishmael, looking for anyone to help her. She's in an abandoned place, there's no one there. Right? And the Prophet ﷺ says, فَإِذَا هِيَ بِسَوْتِ All of a sudden she heard a sound. فَقَالَتْ أَقْبِلْ إِنْ كَانَ عِنْدَكَ خَيْرٍ She said, come forth if you have anything good to offer. So the Prophet ﷺ says, فَإِذَا جِبْرِيل Suddenly it was Jibreel. Then the Prophet ﷺ said, Jibreel did this. All he did was this. He struck the ground with his heel. This is called Hadith Musalsal, which means a Hadith that has a signal in it. Hadith that has wasf. He just struck the ground. So every narrator of this hadith had to do that, by the way. Ibn Abbas said he just did this. And Shu'ba said he just did this. And every single narrator says he just did this. When Jibreel did that, the water obviously started coming from the earth in, 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 you know, in, in huge loads. Zamzam comes bursting out of the ground. And the Prophet said, Rahim Allah um Ismail. May Allah have mercy on the mother of Ismail. What she did was she carved out the well because she was afraid that the water would go all over the place and nothing would be left. And the Prophet said, had she not done that, then the entire earth would have been touched by Zamzam. Each and every single part of the earth. Now SubhanAllah, think about the miracle of Zamzam. Right? You know how big it is in dimensions? Eight by three. It's only 8 by 3. If any of you have ever seen Zamzam, ever gotten a chance to actually go down there and see it, it's only 8 by 3. It's a very small well. If you see how they fill the coolers now in the haram, they've got, literally, they've got hoses that are connected to Zamzam, and they're constantly filling up the coolers. All of that, till today, you are drinking from the foot of Jibreel. 
From that moment that Jibreel did this, Shadid al Quwa, with his strength, Allah has caused that well to constantly produce. Talk about a wonder of the world. Now, scientifically, I need to mention this because this is phenomenal. Zamzam's only eight by three. And in an official research that was done on Zamzam, it pumps 8,000 liters per second. 8,000 liters per second. That means 691 million liters per day. Zamzam. <laughs> Think about how many millions of gallons. I mean, they're, you know, subhanAllah, people are constantly drinking from it. It has never dried up. That's just from the strike of Jibreel's foot. Okay? You're still drinking from it till now. So that's your connection to Jibreel alayhi salam until today. SubhanAllah.